wanted to be a voice for change because um, I come from humble beginnings and you know those experiences have shaped and molded me and I just firmly believe that we all are some total of our life experiences and my life experiences allowed me to have different set of challenges and a, a, a set of struggles as well and it's always been in my heart to you know develop a platform create a platform and help other people um, by sharing my platform with the world so I could get them out of those challenging situations as well. Um, you know, growing up in this neighborhood, it was pretty much every day. Um, you know, we had a couple of people that owned corner stores that, that wasn't black people. And I can recall just going in as a kid, you know, me purchasing something from the store. And I just always remember when they dropped my change in my hand, they never tried to touch my hand. They would drop it like, you know, like my skin was, uh, uh, a, a disease or something of that nature. And then oftentimes you had the police that was running around. Mind you, this was the inception of the crack epidemic. So they just automatically perceived everyone to be selling drugs. And, you know, I was, I walked to the Fluent neighborhood one day, historic Oakwood, and I was fundraising for my AAU basketball trip. Um, I was selling magazines and, you know, I would often sell the magazines and, you know, get people to purchase subscriptions. And, you know, that was my means of cash to, you know, fundraise and finance my AAU trip. Well, one day, you know, I'm coming from the neighborhood and I'm counting my money and a cop pulls up beside me. I'm like 12 years old at the time and he calls me a boy. Um, and we all know what, you know, that meant. And he said, boy, he said, where you get that money from? And I told him, you know, I was selling magazine subscriptions. And I guess he thought I was trying to run game on him or hustle him. And he pulled me to the side and made me spread eagle and um, he took my money out of my pocket, you know, so I went home crying to my mom because, you know, I was violated by a policeman and, and you know, he had taken my money and finance that I worked so hard to finance my AAU trip for. We're still hoping. It's been 400 years and we're still hoping for the appropriate racial relations. You know, I, I, I would hope that black people would not only get treated but receive fair and equal opportunity. Um, I hope we are respected more. I hope our lives are valued more. I hope our children's lives are valued more. I hope to create a life where not only my children, but other children don't have to suffer and go through the, you know, the atrocities that we've experienced and, and our grandfathers experienced along the way. It seems like as, as we pass this from generation to generation, the situations are still the same. Right, it's a different story, but the, the situations are still the same. And the murderers and the lynchings, I think it's all because black people aren't highly respected um, in, in this world. And I think in this year, 2020, you know, we've been forced to take a, a, a blatant look at ourselves and see it for not the ideal country that we wanna be, but the, the real country that we are.